Hello and welcome back to another video. I just thought I'd give you a little update on my kitchen rebuild. Now that it's all finished, nicely done, you can probably hear the diesel heater running in the background. That's because I'm trying to drain the diesel from my diesel heater system because I'm in the process of moving my diesel heater now that my kitchen's done. And as you can probably see behind me, my van is a little bit messy at the moment. <laughs> Here's my diesel heater, and what I, want, what I wanted to show you was my diesel heater pump. Now I bought this upgraded pump, when I first fitted it, it wasn't that quiet. If I stop talking, you can actually hear the diesel heater pump now, and it is super quiet, so quiet in fact, like I said in my last waffle on a Wednesday, I actually drive off forgetting to turn my diesel heater off. But I am running this, you can see I've disconnected the fuel line, so I'm running it, I'm running the heater to try and get all of the fuel out of the system because I need to move this and I don't want diesel everywhere. And the place I'm moving it is going to be behind where my toilet's going to go, which is in this cupboard here. I've already drilled the hole for it. So, uh, I've got it on full blast at the moment, that's why it's so noisy. Looks like it's getting pretty close to empty, so I'm going to slow it down now. Now, whilst I'm at this controller, I just want to share something else with you, I've noticed. I can't actually switch my diesel heater off using the controller. I can switch it on and I can turn the temperature up and down, but I can't actually turn it off for some reason. So if the battery in the remote goes flat, I'm not going to be able to turn my diesel heater off. If anyone out there knows how to cure this problem, with the controller and please do let me know it's starting to make noise i can see bubbles i better switch it off all i've got to do now is get to my remote control which is right up the end of there there you go to turn it off i have to use the remote which is a little bit weird has anyone else got that same problem with their two kilowatt diesel heaters i'd really like to know i was going to refit my five kilowatt diesel heater but unfortunately because it's so much bigger it won't actually fit underneath my wood burner where my toilet is going to end up going. And by the way, my toilet is actually residing on my bed. Yep, I'm a dirty van dweller. What can you say? I've drilled all the necessary holes, fortunately enough. And so now it's just a matter of unplugging it all and rerouting the pipe work. Now I was going to mount the pump underneath my van when I moved the diesel heater, but I decided to mount it all inside and the internal once again. I just prefer everything to be inside the van rather than underneath the van. Because like I've said on so many different occasions, if anything ever goes wrong, you can guarantee it'll go wrong when it's chucking it down with rain or you're snowed in somewhere. So that's why I keep everything as, as much as I possibly can inside the van rather than outside the van and underneath. It's just, <laughs> it's just my luck that these sort of things break down when it's raining and I have to get underneath the van in the cold, wet rain and I don't want to do that. So uh, the diesel pump isn't going to go outside. I'm actually going to mount the diesel pump underneath my wood burner along with the diesel heater. You can see I've already cut the hole there in the bulkhead. So it's just a matter of taking that out, turning it around and put it inside the cupboard. Well, that's the idea anyway. I've lost count how many times I've banged my head again today. I actually think I've got a splinter, so uh, I don't know how I'm going to get a splinter out on the top of my head. Right, well, that's winding down, so now that's winding down, I want to get ready to disconnect everything and move it. So I've got my heater all installed underneath my wood burner where the toilet is going to go. I just want to show you this. I've got this piece of PVC drain pipe, and these clips, look how well this is going to fit on here. I don't think you can see that. <laughs> Let me bring the camera down. This is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Look at this. Look how well that drain pipe fits on here. Now, I was going to just join these pipes together and have it around there, but if you see the state of this stuff, it really does get damaged and it, it breaks, it squashes really easy. And thinking about I'm going to be shoving loads of stuff under here, including my diving equipment. This pipe is going to get damaged. But look how well this fits. This is going to protect it. So now that is butted up against that piece in there. So I'm hoping it doesn't. Um, this doesn't melt. I don't think it will. 
because I thought oh, these fittings are plastic as well and uh, I don't know what they're made of but we'll see but look how well that is going to be protected now I'm super pumped about that look at that that's going to go on there there you go that's going to go back on there like that <laughs> that's just brilliant that is you couldn't make it up fantastic right let's find some screws <laughs> So all I've got to do now is remove my old exhaust pipe, um, connect the new exhaust pipe up underneath the van, and I think we're done. Oh yeah, I've got to fix this as well. Yeah, that's no good. <laughs> Look how much room I've got now. All this space is going to be opened up. So here's my new exhaust coming out and you can see the distance that I've moved it from here to here. I've just moved it forward of the van. I'm going to cover this hole up with some underseal if I can find some. Now I was thinking about joining this part of the silencer to the old exhaust but after cutting it I realised it won't actually fit. This doesn't fit inside that pipe so I'm simply just going to remove this now and then we're done under here. Out of there. I'm also going to get some under seal and put in this old screw hole. Now, I don't think this exhaust has done too bad considering it's been under there for three winters. Two winters? Maybe three. Yeah, I think three winters this has been under there. I only fitted it temporarily, <laughs> and although it's rusty on the outside, this was still really hard to cut. So, uh, not bad. It lasted a lot longer than I thought it would. Well, cutting that exhaust wasn't quite a waste of time after all because I used the offcut to make a tailpipe to deflect the fumes from my diesel heater to out underneath my van. That's got to be worth a thumbs up, surely? <laughs> right, let's jump back inside the van and finish this off. So I'm sat here thinking to myself, now I've got an extra hole in the floor where the exhaust used to be. How am I going to plug that hole? And then I thought to myself, well, why not take the piece of plug that came out of the hole that I've now drilled for the new position for the new exhaust and see if that plug will fit in the hole <laughs> where the exhaust used to be take a look at this it fits perfect that piece of polystyrene fits absolutely perfect in this hole I've left the heat shield in place I haven't touched that so the polystyrene fits nice and snug in there and if I can find it we're done with it <laughs> not that one that's too big it's gone under my kneeling pad and the plug that's come out of the hole the new hole kind of fits in there it's really tight let's move it out of the way let's put it that way up look at that I think with a bit of gentle persuasion that might just go in there yeah just needs a little bit of persuasion <laughs> Let's give that a quick little tap and see if that'll fit in there. <laughs> perfect. Kind of perfect. <laughs> Look at that. Let's just hope that my toilet still fits in here. Now I've got the heater, but the heater is actually behind the toilet now. I hope the door still closes. <laughs> That's got to be tight. That's got to be really close. Look at that. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so relieved that that actually fits in there still. Right, so that's the toilet back in. Let's put all the stuff back in now. Look at the state of my bed. <laughs> So I'm going to tidy all this up, tidy this mess up, and I'll be right back. And by the way, these pieces of pipe sticking through my cab, I've got absolutely nothing to do with my heater. They're actually for my underwater dredge that I'm going to be making. Now before I put the lid back on, the bench seat itself, I just want to show you how much room there is under there now. Look at that, that's how much difference it makes. Now that big heater's gone, I've got all this extra room. So now I can put my shoes under there, <laughs> my bag under there, 
my little backpack my swimming stuff there you go all under there and there's still more room so worth it and it just shows you how much extra space you can make just by making small alterations and it just goes to show that every little inch counts when you're building out a camper van every nook and cranny in your van you will find something to fit in there i can guarantee when you live in a small space like this every little inch counts here is the end result as you can see i now have a dedicated toilet cupboard and my heater is sneakily tucked in behind my porta potty and i'm really pleased how this has worked out really pleased now you'll probably notice the door is looking a bit worse for where it's looking a little bit tatty but that's because i actually salvaged that door from where my fridge now resides that door used to be there and because that cubby hole where the fridge is was the same size as underneath my wood burner cupboard it meant it this door would actually fit in there i had to trim a little bit off to make it a little smaller but nonetheless it actually fits so all i've got to do now is find my paint and my paintbrush and give my poor old van a good lick of paint because as you can see it is actually looking a little bit worse for wear a little bit tired and there's chips and cracks everywhere and that is one of the reasons i like this style of van build because if anything does get damaged or chipped it is really easy to repair stuff like this can be easily repaired unlike the furniture board van builds you see i mean they do look nice they look thoroughly modern but this is really simple it's really effective and most of all it's really cheap to build as well so if you're thinking about building a camper van and you're worried about costs then can i suggest that this style of van build the rustic look is definitely the way to go it is really cheap it's really effective and most importantly it's really easy to repair as well it's really easy to change around and like i always say to everyone keep it simple keep it safe and you won't go far wrong well i hope you enjoyed this video i do hope you found it mildly entertaining slightly informative and if you did don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and i'll see you why am i using my little finger i'll see you next time thanks for watching ta-da for now